All right, so now we have some freelancers in the database, or a freelancer. Hopefully you created a few more. Now let's actually list them out on the homepage. And so to do that, we'll use a class-based view. And to do this, we'll just create a class, and then we'll call it freelancer list view. That inherits from list view, which we'll, we will need to in, import at the top. So we'll say from Django dot views dot generic import list view and then all we have to do is specify the model and that is freelancer and we already have that imported right here so perfect so now we could make this a function based view and just say def freelancer list take the request you know go ahead and query all the freelancers freelancer equals freelancer dot objects dot all so we get all of the freelancers and we can create a context variable and it's just a dictionary and we can specify freelancer is equal to freelancer and we probably want this to be plural freelancers and then return render whatever we want to render but the classes are nice because this is a common paradigm this is a common use case this listing out items from the database. So they added this to Django so that all you have to do is specify the model and then it knows, okay, we'll get all the objects for that model, create the context, and we're going to render a template. So that's why class-based views are nice if you're using sort of basic common paradigms, listing things out, detail, listing out lists of items or just a detail view, things like that. It's nice and concise. And the next thing we'll do now is set up our URL. We'll, we'll modify the base URL, this time to use the freelancer list view. So we'll say freelancer list view dot as view. Since it's a class, it needs to take a function and then we'll just call it um, home, name equals home. And then the final thing is actually the template. And so if we create in our jobs app, a few folders so we'll say new file and this will be under templates slash job slash freelancer underscore list dot html so we have to kind of do this jobs templates jobs folder thing that Django expects and then when we use the list view class based view we have to go model underscore list dot html so this is the template that it's expecting and then here I can paste in some html and the most important part is right here, this for loop. So we say for freelancer in object list. And so when we use this class, it passes in this object list item that contains all of those objects from the database for that model. So f f all these freelancers. And then we can just list out the freelancer.name. So we can go ahead and run the server. Python manage.py run server. And we'll open that up and we get an error. As view takes one positional argument, but two. So it's dot as. And we maybe need to call this. Let's try that. I'm going to translate it. So we only have one freelancer who we created here, but you should see all of the freelancers that you had listed. So awesome. Now we're starting to list items from the database. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is create a detail page so that we can actually see the specific details about a freelancer. So let's jump back in and we can minimize the terminal and we'll create another view. And this time, instead of being a list view, we can create another class freelancer detail view that takes detail view so we'll have to import that up here next to list view detail view like so and again we just have to specify the model model equals freelancer and now again we could do this with a function based view we could say def freelancer detail oops freelancer detail that takes the request and a pk a primary key we could say freelancer equals freelancer dot objects dot get pk equals pk. We could um, have the context be freelancer freelancer and then then again we would just return and render some template and pass this in and we could check if the freelancer exists or not. We could uh, return a 404, 404 page but Again, this is all nicely taken care of with these classes in two lines of code. 
And so again, we'll just create the URLs. So we'll go ahead and, and we'll say this path is developer slash int PK. And this will be the freelancer detail view, like so, dot as view. And we'll call this freelancer slash detail. And then we'll want to create another template. And so the template that it, it expects, the class expects, is going to be called freelancer underscore detail that HTML. And then we can paste in this HTML. And again, it's just a basic HTML document, but we get access to the object, which is the freelancer. And so we'll just display their name, their tagline, their website, and their bio. So we can go ahead and make sure the server's still running. And so if we go to slash developer one, you can see we get Don Bacchiano. This is a test account that goes to my website and I'm a test account. Awesome, so now we are listing out all the developers. The next thing we're gonna do is add some styling with Tailwind CSS and also learn about template inheritance and create a sort of base template file that we can use in all of our other files so we don't have to keep updating every single one. But we probably want to start to add some styling. And so to do, to do that, we're going to use Tailwind CSS. And also every single template we're having to paste in the head and all of this stuff that's pretty common. And so with Django templating language, you can inherit different parts or templates from different files. So we can create one kind of base file that has all of the common things across all the other files and inherit from that so that we only have to pretty much add like the body. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is create that base file. So we'll say new file and we'll go underscore base.html and the underscore just signifies this is something that doesn't really change. It's kind of like a configuration, just like a boilerplate. And we'll paste in this HTML code and we can walk through it. So basically it has the HTML tags, the head tags that are common. It imports this Tailwind script here so that every page will have access to the Tailwind CSS. And then it opens up the body tag and applies some styling and contains a little header. So it has a link to go to the freelancer list, which we'll update the name of in a second. And then it also has some buttons to sign in or sign up. And then block content and end block content. This is where we will pass in whatever is specific to that page. So all of our other pages will inherit from this. So they'll all have this. And then whatever we put in those other pages will just show up. So the next page we're going to want to update is freelancer list because right now we have no styling. So it's looking a little bit bland. So let's go ahead and grab this HTML, paste that in. And you can see it has this extends jobs slash underscore base dot HTML. And so this is where we tell this file here, okay, extend from base.html, base render everything in base.html. And then we have these tags block content and end block content. And if we go back to base, we have block content and end block content. So it's saying all of this content, put it right inside of and display the rest of the. And we also added some styling. So we loop through the freelancer. We link to the freelancer detail. We add a little kind of card and some styling and the name of the freelancer and their tagline and so on. So it looks, like and then the final, the final document is the freelancer deep. And so we want to again, extend from that base at HTML page. So it has the navigation and things like that. And then we add our block content. So this is what will kind of inject it into that page. And we have the name, the tagline, the website, and then the bio. And I think that in the freelancer or in the base at HTML, in this tag, want this URL to be called freelance. So let's just go back to URLs and update this home view to be freelancer dash list. So I think that should work. And now we can see what it looks like. So if we pull back up server or the page, make sure your server's running. Boom. So it looks a lot nicer. Now we have this sign in sign up button. We have freelancers that takes us to all the freelancers. And then it renders out these cards with their name and their bio a tagline. And if you click on it, then it takes you to their profile page. Awesome. So it looks a lot nicer with Talon CSS. And we also have this navigation as a base file. So we don't have to add it to every single time to be annoying. Awesome. So the next thing we're going to tackle is user authentication. And so we're going to be using Jeff. great package. If you have enjoyed this series so far, appreciate a like and subscribe so you can see when the next video comes out. And if you have any feedback or comments, let me know in the comment section below.